Good afternoon and welcome to Purdue University and the Sirius Security Seminar. Our speaker today is Dr. Frederica Pacci. She is from the University of Milan and is working here in the Computer Science Department at Purdue as a research uh, postdoctoral fellow with uh, Dr. Elisa, Elisa Bertino. Uh, her topic today is Access Control and Resiliency for Web Services Business Process Languages. Thank you for the introduction and good afternoon. Uh, so today I will talk about access control and resiliency for WS BPL business process. Uh, okay. Uh, first of all, sorry, let's go back on one slide. Uh, first of all, I will uh, uh, explain why we need, we need to talk today about access control and uh, resiliency for WS BPL business process. Then I will compare uh, our work with uh, um, other works that uh, have investigated similar problems. And then I will give you an overview about our approach that is called RBAC uh, uh, WSBPL. So uh, in the last years, in the last 15 years, business process management systems have gained a lot of attention uh, due to the pressing need for integrating business processes of different organizations. And uh, recently, web services uh, uh, has, uh, has been uh, chosen as the best, uh, the preferred uh, um, way to, uh, mm, mm, the basis way to develop and uh, um, execute business process. Um, many XML-based XML languages um, have been proposed for orchestrating, for the specification of the orchestration of uh, business process, and all these languages have resulted in WSBPL language. Mm, today, WSBPL is uh, uh, the standard, de facto standard language to express uh, uh, business process as composition of web services. Uh, WSBPL uh, uh, is uh, used to express automated business process, but most of the time, uh, business process requires the uh, participation of uh, users to complete the execution of the process. So there is the need to extend uh, WSBPL uh, to uh, support the participation of users in the execution of a process. And uh, this extension uh, arises a number of uh, issues. First of all, um, business processes are usually long-running long process. So the users, the set of users who is uh, associated with the execution of the process uh, may vary during the execution of uh, the process itself. Uh, what does it mean? That some of the users may become unavailable or may become uh, um, illness, uh, so they are not available to, the, to execute the process. Uh, so it's very important to make sure that uh, even if some users uh, become unavailable, the, uh, the execution of the process can be completed. And this pro we refer to this problem as resiliency. Uh, another problem that arises due to the introduction of user in a business process is uh, uh, to how to make sure that uh, the users who execute an activity of the process uh, has the permission to do that. So there is a need to enforce an access control mechanism on the execution of business process activity. In the context of business process, access control means identify uh, the authorization, uh, which are the authorization on, uh, on the execution of the activity, but also means to specify authorization constraints uh, such as separation of duty and uh, binding of duty constraint. Uh, so the goal of our work is to um, propose a framework that allows uh, um, a deployment time when the pro a business process is uh, instantiated uh, to evaluate if the process uh, is uh, mm, resilient to the absence of user. And at runtime to verify whether the execution of uh, an activity by a user can be granted or not. Um, regarding the, uh, the specification of uh, uh, human activity in the WBPL process uh, last year, um, IBM and SAP have proposed a BPL for people specification. BPL for people extends the syntax of WSBPL with a new type of activity that is called the people activity. Uh, in this specification, they do not consider nor the resiliency problem, nor the access control problem. The, what, they, what they do is to simply list uh, uh, the set of users that are assigned to the execution of the activity in the activity itself, or they express it as a query of, um, on an organizational directory. Uh, 
the works of Kosciutowski et al. and Schiapeng et al. have investigated the problem of access control for WSBPL process. They have proposed a role -based, two role-based access control model that allows the specification of, uh, um, of also the specification of authorization constraints. Um, they don't investigate, they don't propose any extension to support una, human activity, neither the, they investigate the resiliency, the, the resiliency pro problem for business process. Um, the work of uh, Wang and the Professor Ningui Li from Purdue University uh, probably is the closest work uh, to ours because they have proposed a role-based and relation-based access control model for workflow systems. And in the context of this model, um, they have investigated the workflow satisfactory problem. That uh, is when to determine if a set of users uh, can complete the execution of the workflow. And the resiliency problem, um, that is uh, if uh, a certain set of user uh, becomes unavailable the, 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 if still the execution of the process can complete. Uh, as you will see later, uh, the resiliency problem, uh, we face the resiliency problem in a different way from uh, the Professor Wang and Professor Lee approach. But I'm going to explain later uh, which are the differences, the main differences. <coughs> Um, for all the talk, I will uh, refer to this uh, example. This is an example of BPL process uh, that implements uh, a, a submission, um, a project proposal submission that is deployed inside an academic uh, institution. Uh, the process uh, consists of uh, um, six main activities um, provided by four different web services. The submit activities uh, allows a, a, a user to submit a project proposal and uh, it is provided by the submission service. Then we have uh, uh, the op review operation that uh, um, are provided by a review service and uh, the approve operation that is provided by the approval service. Um, and finally, we have the assigned fund operation uh, that uh, uh, is provided by the funds assignment service and that uh, al once the project is approved, uh, allows to assign a certain amount of funds to the project proposal. To address uh, the problem of the resiliency problem and the access control problem in the context of WSBPL process, uh, we, have, we propose uh, RBAC WSBPL. RBAC WSBPL is an, uh, an authorization model uh, that inherits some feature from uh, a traditional role-based access control model and attribute-based access control models. Uh, the main characteristics are that uh, uh, RBAC WSBPL allows the specification of uh, uh, resiliency constraint uh, and the specification of uh, uh, human activities and uh, the specification authorization constraints that restrict the set of user uh, role uh, that can execute a uh, human activity in the business process. This picture uh, gives an overview of the, of the main component of, uh, that characterize our model. I will go through into detail of each of them. First of all, uh, we, uh, we are able to handle human interaction. Now uh, we have a stand in WSBPL uh, to support this kind of activity. We have uh, a stand in the syntax with a new type of activity that is called human activity. Uh, this activity is always associated with uh, uh, a, callable a callable human web service interface. So uh, in our case, uh, uh, the interface that is provided to the user to input any information is uh, uh, provided by a web service. Um, as I said before, our back inherits some feature for role-based access control models. So uh, in our model, we have the concept of roles. Roles uh, are associated with uh, a set of uh, conditions uh, on properties the user should have uh, to be um, assigned to, uh, to, a, to the specific role. Uh, this property, um, this user property are uh, um, denoted as identity attributes, usually are conveyed in digital credentials that are released by uh, a transfer party called the certification authority. So in RBAC WSBPL, a user is assigned to a, the process of assigning a user to a role consists in uh, uh, evaluating uh, user identity attribute against role uh, attribute conditions. Roles uh, are uh, um, structured in a role hierarchy that defines, uh, uh, a, let's say, a um, 
permission inheritance relation between the roles. So a role that is dominated uh, in the hierarchy, a role that dominates uh, other roles in the hierarchy inherited, inherited the authorization, the permission of the role who dominates in the hierarchy. Uh, this is an example of a role hierarchy that we can associate with the submission process I introduced before. Uh, as you can see, it's node represent uh, um, a role in the, in the hierarchy. On top of the hierarchy, for example, we have the dean. Remember that the process was deployed in an academic institution, so all the roles reflect a position uh, that can be covered in academic institutions. So we have the full professor, the associate professor, PhD student, and so on. Um, besides its node, you can see the user that can be assigned to um, the role, the corresponding role represented by the node. Uh, authorization, uh, we represent authorization as uh, per the permission of execute a certain uh, um, uh, action on an activity. For now, we consider only one type of activity that is the execution. And the permission are granted to roles. Uh, for example, um, we, you can see that to the role assistant professor uh, is, is granted the execution of uh, the, in the invocation of review operation. Mm, as we, I said before, our model supports also authorization constraints that uh, restrict uh, the users, uh, place some restriction on the users and the roles. Uh, they can perform a given, uh, an activity given uh, that the user or a role uh, perform an antecedent activity. Uh, we formally defined uh, this uh, kind of constraints uh, as a tuple in which we have uh, three main components. The activity, activity one and activity two, uh, to which the constraint uh, applies, and uh, a binary relation defined on uh, a domain D. There can be uh, a set of roles or users. And uh, uh, this binary relation, uh, you know, express the condition uh, that uh, the user that execute activity one and activity two uh, must satisfy. Uh, you can see an example of separation of duty constraints for the activity invoke review one and invoke review two that states that uh, the, you know, the user that performs these two activities must be different. Uh, we have also uh, in our model another type another type of uh, constraints that uh, are called the resiliency constraints uh, that uh, are used to evaluate the uh, resiliency of uh, WSBPL business process. We, defined, uh, we define um, a resiliency constraint for, uh, uh, for each critical activity in the business process. Uh, what resiliency constraints uh, uh, express? It specifies uh, the minimum uh, number of users that must have the authorization to perform a given activity. Uh, to evaluate the resiliency, we consider that we assume that uh, a user has the authorization to perform a given activity when is assigned to a role who has the permission to uh, perform that activity. Uh, the, but uh, the real authorization, the, the, the real execution is, um, is granted to the user only when the user, during the execution of the process, uh, uh, reclaims the execution of the activity. So uh, we have an example of a, a resiliency constraint that states that uh, the invoke review activity must have at least uh, three users that have the authorization uh, to perform invoke review. Um, Based on the definition of a resiliency constraint, uh, we, we can define uh, when a WSBPL process is uh, user failure resilient. That is when for each activity, uh, in the, um, for each activity for which uh, we define a resiliency constraint, uh, the number of authorized users is greater or equal to the resiliency value specified by the constraint. Uh, to each uh, business process, we associate a, maxima, uh, a maximum resiliency. The maximum resiliency uh, value uh, is uh, uh, defined as the maximum resiliency all, between all the resiliency value associated with the activities in the process. So our approach uh, basically uh, consists of two phases that are interleaved with uh, the execution of a WSBPL business process. Uh, the first phase is called planning. And uh, the goal of this phase is to determine if uh, a business process is user resilient or not. 
uh, if the business process is user very resilient, um, uh, the execution of the process can be carried on. Otherwise, uh, uh, a set of information are returned to the business process administrator that can decide uh, to carry on the execution of the process or not. Um, the second phase is the enforcement phase that is performed uh, during the execution of the process and the goal of this phase is to um, check if the execution of the activity can be granted to a user or not. So the basic idea um, of the, how we can uh, um, you know, evaluate if uh, in WS business process is the user resilient or not. Uh, the, we, mm, our notion of user resilient to evaluate that the business process is user uh, failure resilient we, mm, we use the notion of configuration a configuration list uh, uh, for each activity in, uh, for each human activity in the process um, a set of uh, um, uh, a user that is authorized to perform the activity um, so once uh, one approach to evaluate the resiliency of the of a pro if a process or if a business process is user resilient is to compute all this uh, possible configuration of uh, assignment to uh, user of user to activities and then uh, evaluate the resiliency constraint against this process or uh, we, this is approach is very you know expensive because computing all the config the configuration must be infinite uh, so we have uh, uh, conceived an array approach that consists of uh, um, computing only a subset of this configuration um, that have the following characteristics that for each activity, human activity for which is defined a resiliency constraint, uh, we choose a different, we select a different user in each configuration to perform that activity. And uh, also the authorization constraints uh, um, must, um, must not have to be violated in, uh, by the configuration. Um, we need only to, in our approach, we need only to compute uh, a number of uh, uh, this configuration that is equal to uh, the maximum resiliency associated with the process. Because the idea is that, uh, for example, if for an activity uh, the maximum the, the res a resiliency constraint states that uh, we need to have three different three users, at least three users uh, that have the authorization to perform that activity, if we find uh, uh, three configuration, three different configuration in which the user who performed that activity, uh, the user who performed that activity is different, we can con we can say that uh, the resiliency constraint for that activity is satisfied. The problem of this approach is that, uh, uh, unfortunately, the complexity of uh, computing such conversation is uh, NP complete. In particular, it's equal to the number of users, uh, potential users are associated to the execution of the process at the number of activity in the process multiplied um, the maximum resiliency. Why? Because in the worst case, uh, we have to compute, uh, we have to try for each configuration uh, to compute uh, a configuration uh, all the possible assignment to users of uh, user to activities. And we have to iterate this step for um, a number of time equal to the maximum resiliency. So in order to reduce the complexity of uh, computing this conversation, we have introduced two uh, heuristics. Uh, the first heuristics apply to those activities in the process that are linked uh, to by a binding of duty constraints. So the idea is that for this activity to set uh, the set of authorized user um, to the intersection of the sets uh, of users that are authorized to perform each single activity. In this way, uh, we are able to reduce the number of uh, user of um, the number of uh, assignment of user to activities because uh, mm, we are going to choose, uh, uh, we are going to select a user to perform this activity so for this intersection and so the probability that uh, the assignment will fail and it's, uh, uh, is very low. Another heuristic we have introduced to reduce the complexity is, uh, um, is uh, related to activity that uh, are linked by a separation of duty constraint. We group these activities um, that are linked together, and for each of these activities, we, um, we compute a, so a sub configuration 
of assignment of user to activity. And then uh, we merge this configuration together uh, to obtain a configuration for the whole process. Uh, why this, this uh, heuristic uh, reduces the, um, the number of assignment? Because uh, uh, in, the, in, ca in the case in which, uh, in computing the configuration, um, we, uh, this, an assignment fails, uh, we don't have to try to reassign a user to all the antecedent activity in the business process, but only, to, um, the, only for those antecedent activity that are in the same group of the activity for which the assignment is failed. Um, so once we have, we have uh, de determined if uh, a business process is uh, uh, resili uh, user failure resilient or not, we can, uh, we can carry on with the execution of the process. And uh, during the execution, what, what happens is that the user can list the set of activity uh, that needs to be uh, executed and can claim the execution of an activity. Once he does that, the, the, goal, the enforcement phase uh, uh, evaluates if the user, uh, the execution of the activity can be granted to the user by, uh, by mm, verifying the following condition, that the user is assigned to a role that has the permission to execute the activity, uh, that uh, uh, the execution of the activity by the user do, does not violate any of the authorization constraints, and uh, that uh, the business process is and complete. Uh, how we can uh, uh, verify that uh, all these conditions are satisfied. The idea of the, of the algorithm is to uh, compute for each couple of activity in the process uh, the set of users that satisfy the authorization constraint and the set of users that uh, have the permission to execute the activity. Um, if for some of this activity the intersections of these two set is empty, uh, it means the, the execution of the activity is denied. To support the, um, the planning and um, the, the execution phases of our, in our approach, we have uh, conceived this architecture. Uh, the core element of the architecture is uh, another business process that, uh, we that is called enforcement service that is added uh, to the WSBPL specification. This mm, web service, this additional web service, uh, provides three different interfaces one uh, that performs the planning phase, uh, another interface uh, provide, that provides the functionalities to um, manage the execution of uh, a human activity, and uh, another interface for the user um, that through this interface can claim the execution of an activity. Um, so far we, have implement, we are working on the implementation of this architect system architecture on top of the ODE BPL engine, and uh, till now we are implementing only the, the interface about uh, the, um, the, that uh, implements the planning phase. And uh, we are still working on the, the other two, the implementation on the other two. And uh, we, mm, we, have we have performed some uh, uh, experiments about the, um, uh, the execution of the planning phase to evaluate the, uh, the impact of the heuristic we have proposed uh, um, on the, on the reduction of the computational times. Uh, to perform this test, uh, we have uh, implemented a version of the algorithm that uh, supports the heuristic, so an optimized, our uh, optimized version of, uh, uh, for computing the configurations, and uh, a version that does of, the, that, uh, of an algorithm that does not support this uh, optimization. Um, we have uh, considered the WSBPL process uh, co composed of 21 activities, and uh, that is characterized by, the, by, by a maximum resiliency equal to six. And uh, we have uh, considered a set of potential of, of 50 potential users and uh, a role hierarchy consisting of seven roles. So we have uh, uh, measured the execution time of the, of the, let's say, planning algorithm optimized and uh, of the non-optimized non one uh, by increasing, with increasing the number of binding of duty constraints. And uh, as you can see, uh, the blue line represents uh, our optimized approach, while the red line represents the non-optimized approach. The time of our approach are almost constant. We can say that are almost constant with the increases of the, the binding of duty constraint. Why, uh, while the, other ta the, the time of the non-optimized approach is, uh, is increasing. 
um, why we have this result? Because um, the optimization we have introduced, the, heuristic, the first heuristic we have introduced, um, reduces the number of uh, assignment uh, of user to activities. So let, we can say that uh, even that if uh, the number of uh, um, binding of duty constraints uh, uh, increases, um, we, since we reduce the number of user assi this is uh, this time uh, let's say it's a counterbalance by the fact that we reduce the number of user assignment. In the other approach, uh, uh, instead the uh, we don't you know the time increases because we don't have a reduction of uh, uh, the number of assignment, and so of course increasing the number of duty constraint uh, in it increases also the possibility of uh, uh, having uh, a, a failure in the in the user uh, uh, assignment. Uh, in the assignment of user to activities. Um, then we have evaluated, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, performed another, uh, another test case to evaluate the impact of the second heuristic. So we have measured the execution time of the optimize our approach with the one of the, with the, the one that does not adopt the, the heuristics. And uh, even in this case, we have that uh, um, our, um, our approach is, the time of our approach are uh, slightly increased. We can say that uh, uh, are almost constant, while the, the time of the non-optimized approach uh, linearly increase. Uh, again, why we have, the, we have this, uh, this result? Because uh, um, by applying our heuristic, uh, let's say that uh, Mm. compared to other approach, uh, but when uh, with the number of, uh, uh, in, uh, of the separation of duty constraints increase, uh, this reduces the number of users that uh, can uh, be assigned to, the, to perform the activities uh, that are linked by uh, a separation of duty constraint. Uh, so this increases the number of uh, failure in the assigning a user uh, uh, to this kind of activities that are linked by a separation of duty constraint. And so this causes a, a, a number of, uh, an, increasing, uh, uh, an increasing in the, in the execution time on the non-optimized approach. While in our approach, we don't have this problem because uh, uh, by, as I said before, by grouping the activities uh, um, that are linked by uh, a separation of duty constraint, we are, um, we perform the, uh, once we have a failure in the assignment of a user, we re-perform the, uh, we try to re the reassignment of a user only for the um, antecedent activity that are in the same group. Uh, overall, you can see that uh, in both cases, our execution time is always under, the, the execution time of our approach is always under the 100 milliseconds. So it means that even if, uh, the, computa the computation of this uh, configuration is uh, NP complete, uh, and uh, and with the adoption of this uh, heuristic, we are able to make our approach eff effective in most of the real case uh, scenarios. So to conclude, uh, we have presented a framework for WSBPL process that allows uh, the specification of human activities the specification uh, of uh, resiliency constraint and uh, as a consequence to evaluate if uh, a business process is uh, uh, resilient to the absence of user, the specification of authorization and authorization constraints on your activity, and uh, uh, an enforcement of this, uh, author based on this authorization, authorization constraint, uh, that evaluate, they allow to evaluate if uh, a, a request uh, um, execution of an activity can be granted or not to a user. So thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions? Are there other role-based access control additions to these kind of languages? Is, is that part of your work new, or is it, is it the combination of that and the resiliency work? Uh, do you mean if we extend WSBPL to support our back? Uh, 
yeah, this is a uh, part of the work because uh, currently WSBPL does not support any role-based uh, access control mechanism. Other questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.